The next topic is SNS. Simple Notification Service is is a service which which uh, publishes the messages. So this is this is actually the publisher subscriber uh, delivery model. So we would be first understanding about what is SNS. What are features of SNS? What are the types of SNS? And what is the difference between SQS and SNS? So let's get started and get some understanding of SNS. So it is again a fully managed messaging service. It's also serverless that enables you to publish messages from application and immediately deliver them to subscribers. This is very similar to that of the subscription that you make in your emails as well. So suppose there is one site TLDR. If you want to receive the emails from this, then what you have to do, you have to subscribe to them. So once you subscribe to this TLDR, what will happen? You would be getting the messages, right? You would be getting the emails from them. So this is what happens into publisher subscriber thing. The messages or the emails would be published to the subscribers. So it follows the publish subscribe or pub sub messaging paradigm with notifications being delivered to client using push mechanism. So this will be pushing out the messages to the subscribers. Whereas into SQS, you have to pull out the messages from the queue. So this is one important difference between SQS and SNS. Now, what are the features of SNS? So the features of SNS can be thought as application to application messaging. So it supports the subscribers such as Amazon Kinesis Firehose delivery streams, Lambda functions, SQS queues, any HTTP endpoints. So application to application messaging is also possible. It is not just their application to person. Application to application or service to service is also possible. Other feature is application to person. So application to person notification will provide user notifications to subscribers such as mobile applications, mobile phone numbers in the form of SMSs, email addresses. So this would be A to A and this would be A to P. You can again here also create two types of topics, standard and FIFO topics. So what happens here is you create the topics in SNS basically. So let's suppose that I have one topic about beauty. Then I have another topic about science. I have topic about IT. So these are the different topics that I've created and to each topic we can have the group of subscribers. Right, so this is how the SNS works. So these topics can be created in either the standard or FIFO format. So we can use the FIFO topic to ensure strict message ordering, to define the message groups and to prevent the message duplications. Only Amazon SQS FIFO queues can subscribe to FIFO topic. Right. And standard topic can be used when message delivery order and possible message duplications are not critical. So all of the supported delivery protocols can subscribe to a standard topic. Next is message durability. So SNS uses a number of strategies that work together to provide message durability. 
published messages are stored across multiple geographically separated servers and data centers. If a subscribed endpoint isn't available, then SNS runs a retry policy. It will run a delivery retry policy, so your messages would be sent to the subscribers. To preserve any messages that aren't delivered before the delivery retry policy end, you can create a dead letter queue over here as well. The next is message archiving and analytics. So you can subscribe Kinesis Data Firehose delivery streams to SNS topic. So Kinesis basically deals with real-time data. Okay, so when you are doing the subscription of Kinesis Data Firehose delivery streams to SNS topic, it allows you to send notifications to additional archiving and analytical endpoints such as S3, Redshift tables and more. So Firehose basically is used where uh, you want your real-time or you know streaming data to be stored permanently somewhere so when you subscribe it to the sns topic it will send all the notifications to s3 or redshift table wherever you create the target in using the firewalls and there you can analyze and archive your data or messages then message attributes so it lets you provide any arbitrary metadata about the messages. Then we have message filtering. By default, each subscriber receives every message published to the topic. But if we don't want that, okay, if I am subscribed to the beauty topic, every uh, message which is coming to the beauty topic would be received by me. But to receive a subset of the messages, a subscriber must assign a filter policy to the topic subscription. So a subscriber can also define the filter policy scope to enable the payload based or attribute based filtering. So according to the message attributes, the metadata that we are adding with the message, it can be used for filtering out our messages. The default value for the filter policy scope is message attribute. So when the incoming message attribute match the filter policy attribute, the message is delivered to the subscribed endpoint. Otherwise, the message is filtered out. So when the filter policy scope is message body, the filter policy attribute are ma matched against the payload. And then accordingly, they are being messaged, uh, they are being filtered out. Lastly, we have message security. Server side encryption will be applicable here, which protects the content of our messages that are stored in SNS topics. You can use encryption keys provided by KMS. You can also establish a private connection between SNS and your VPC. So that also can give you the additional layer of security over here. So these are all the features of SNS that makes it really good publisher subscriber messaging service. Right. Apart from this, we have Fan out. This is one of the important thing that is fan out. Fan out means SNS can distribute messages to multiple recipients or applications simultaneously. So it makes it easy to broadcast the messages for notifications. Right. And this will be costing you according to your usage. So there is no minimum fee or upfront commitments. So when I talk about fan out, what I mean is I have this SNS, okay? Application, uh, whatever application is there, okay? Is putting the data to SNS. From this SNS, I can have the 
subscription of this sns i have two queues subscribe to this sns topic so let's suppose that this is the order sns topic so when the order is placed then one of uh, one of uh, the subscription is order queue where it will process the order and other is analysis queue so it will be used for analyzing that particular order so this is the concept of fan out that we can have multiple you know queues subscribe to a single sns topic so again there are two types of sns queue sns topics one is standard and one is fifo so by default the topic that you create would be of sns and you have to be careful because once you create this you cannot change this okay if you have created the standard topic you cannot uh, go to fifo you cannot upgrade it and whenever you are creating the fifo queues or fifo topics then you have to add the suffix dot fifo to the name of your queue suppose my queue is named as my queue and if i want to create the fifo queue then i have to add the suffix of fifo if i am creating the sns topic called as my topic and if i want it to be fifo i have to add a suffix called fifo so standard one is the default type of topic in sns it provides a simple publisher subscriber messaging model where message is published to a standard topic and all subscriber would receive the copy here there are chances that you know we might have duplication like one message can be delivered multiple times sometimes it may go out of order so when these two things are critical you have to go to fifo it provides a strict order of message delivery system and duplication of data is avoided here so where this can be used into financial transactions into healthcare systems into e-commerce platforms right into the financial transaction think about it as you debited 50000 rupees okay and then you credited 1 lakh rupees so it is important to get the messages in this order itself right or else you would be like panicking so that's why here when the order is important and where duplication is not required then in that case you have to go with your fifo topics so next we discuss about the difference between sns and sqs so sqs is queuing service okay here the message would be buffered and they would be retained they would be stored but sns is messaging and notification service so messages would not be stored or retained it is just publishing the messages to all the subscribers next we have message delivery so messages are stored in queue but here there is no storage it is directly broadcasted to the subscribers it supports http https along with amazon sdks protocols and this will support http https emails sms mobile push notifications and amazon sdks so these can be different types of subscribers you can send the uh, you know messages in form of email in form of smss and push notifications so these are all the different types of um protocols that are supported by sns the subscription method or model of sqs is pool based so messages are retrieved by the consumers from the queue okay so consumers would be pulling the messages but in sns we have to it will push out the messages to the subscribers message ordering would be maintained with the message within a message group but here does it does not guarantee order of delivery 
again it depends up to the type of queues and the sns topics that we are using durability if we talk about then sqs is stored redundantly across multiple servers but this is stored across multiple servers as well as data centers message retention would be configurable you can have up to 14 days of time for being default but here messages are not being re retained so it is not applicable at all here both of them supports 256 kb of message size if you want to have larger messages than this then what you can do in queue is you can use the s3 bucket and you can pass the endpoint of that object into the queue. Or you can use DynamoDB and then you can pass the endpoint in the queue. But if you do so, you have to write your processing logic accordingly. Message filtering in queue is only supported using simple filtering using the message attributes. But in SNS, it will support both according to the attributes, according to the payload body or the message content. Pricing model, if we talk about SQS, it is based on number of requests and the data transfer. But into SNS, it is number of messages published and delivered. Again, the pricing would be differing according to the type of SQS queue and the SNS topic that you are making. The use cases for SQS can be task processing, job queues, decoupling the application components. So if you want to process your tasks, right, then you can put those tasks into queue and one by one task would be processed. The same is job queue. Decoupling the application components, we already talked when the production tier or the producer is making the, you know, creating the request at very high velocity, then we can buffer those requests into SQS so that we do not lose those messages and the consumer is also not overwhelmed. If we talk about the use cases of SNS, then it is deliver system to system messaging if you want to deliver the mobile push notifications email notifications sms's or any kind of event driven computing then in that case sns would be helpful for us so these are the important differences between sqs as well as sns so now that we are understanding the basic concepts of sqs and sns and the difference between two let us see that how can we configure these on our portal before we go to the portal let us understand that what are we going to do here in our demonstration so in this demonstration what we will try to do is we will try to create one sns topic Okay, this will be one SNS topic and we would be actually subscribing our SQS queue to this particular topic. So whatever messages are coming to SNS would be sent to SQS. Okay, they would be published to SQS. Now we can also try one fan out option over here where we can have two SQS topics subscribed to our SNS. So let us try this on the portal and see that how it works and what are all the configurations that we have to do. So I am on to my AWS portal right now. What are we going to do is we will be first of all creating our SNS topic. So I'll go to simple notification service. So I'm here at simple notification service. On the left hand side, you can see that we have topics, we have subscriptions. If you want to have the push notifications or text messages, then we can go to the mobile section as well. 
So here also it shows that it allows application to application. This is what we are doing right now, correct? We'll be doing application to application means SNS would be sending the message to the SQS. So that is A to A. It also, sub it also supports A to P, right? Both of these are supported over here. We will be going to the topics. Into the topic, I have several created here, but I will create a new topic. So which one do you want to create? Do you want to create the FIFO or standard? So see here, it says that FIFO topic is strictly preserved message. It will strictly preserving the message ordering, but this will have best order possible. So it is not compulsory that standard would always be having the same ordering. Okay, it will exactly process the message once the FIFO, but it will at least once message delivery will be there. So um, it may happen that you might get one message twice or thrice, right? You can have 3000 publishes per second and here highest throughput in like, you know, nearly unlimited publishes per second. The subscription protocol is SQS. You can send this to SQS and here it supposes SQS, Lambda, HTTP, SNS, mobile application endpoints, etc. So here it also says topic type cannot be modified after the topic is created. That is what I told you in the slides as well. And if you create this FIFO, it will be appended with the FIFO suffix. What are the naming convention? You can have maximum of 256 characters in your FIFO queue. It can include alphanumeric characters, hyphens, underscores. So we would be just creating the standard topic over here and I will call it as, let's say my standard topic. Next option is encryption. So do you want server-side encryption to protect your SNS uh, messages? So if you want, you can enable this and you have to give your customer master key over here. Okay. So when you enable this, the SNS will encrypt your message as soon as it is received and it will be decrypting it immediately prior to the delivery. So I don't want this encryption as of now, so I am closing it. Then access policy, by default, only the topic owner can publish or subscribe to the topic, right? But if you want anyone else as well to access your SQS or SNS, then you have to go to advanced over here and you can give your policy. Right now, I am the only one who would be able to access this particular um, SNS stop. So I'll go to basic over here. I don't want to add anything. I don't want to change it. So we will just close this. Then data protection policy. So this basically allows you to define with sensitive data to monitor and to prevent from being exchanged. Sometimes it may happen, right, that you might get some sensitive data or unwanted data. If you want to have such kind of data protection that it cannot be, you know, further uh, delivered to the subscriber, then you can have it over here. You can add a deny statement, which will uh, prevent the delivering of your data. Okay. Which accounts to prevent delivering of your data. Then de-identify configuration. So it will configure with sensitive data in the message you want to de-identify. It will again um, you know, prevent the publishing of that particular data. You can also configure with sensitive data to audit. Okay. So here you can add the statement. So if you want to add a deny statement, you can add a deny statement that with what should be the identifier for that. If there is any kind of, you know, bank account number or uh, credit card details, then we don't want to pass it to the subscribers, right? So you can add the deny statement over here. I don't want to do that here, so I'll just remove this. So we will. Okay. Now delivery policy. It basically defines that how SNS retries the failed deliveries to HTTP or HTTPS endpoints. 
Okay, so here you can see that it is uh, trying three number of retries, retries without delay. Minimum delay is 20 seconds and maximum delay is also 20 seconds. Right, so if you want to change this, you can edit this and the retry policy that is being used is linear. You can also have exponential back off over here. Because it is linear, that's why the maximum and the minimum delay are same. Okay. Then if you want to log your message delivery to the CloudWatch logs, then you can enable this. Okay. But right now, I don't want to add any logging, so I'll disable it. Tags are the optional value. And uh, lastly, if you want to trace your um, topics to view how they are doing, okay, or if there are any field requests, then in that case, you can use X-Ray, which is useful for debugging your serverless applications, right? So you can use this X-ray active tracing, but right now I don't want to trace this. So I'll use, don't use active tracing. So once it is done, you can create your topic from here. You can see that your topic is created. You can edit your topic, delete or publish a message. So right now, if you see that we do not have any subscriptions over here. So we have to create a subscription, right? So if I click on create subscription, then it will ask me that which protocol to what service you want to publish the message to, right? So for that, we will be creating one SQSQ first and then we will be creating the subscription over here. Right now I will cancel. So I am on my SQS portal right now. You can see I have multiple queues here as well, but I'll create a new queue and we will understand the configurations. Again, we have to select what queue we want to create, standard or FIFO. Once selected, we can't change the queue, queue type after creating it. So I'll go with the standard. I'll call it as, let's say, my standard queue. The configuration over here is, we have to set the visibility timeout. Do you remember this configuration? We discussed it on slide that how much of time should we be hiding this data from other consumer when one consumer already consumed the message. So it is between 0 to 12 hours. So generally this visibility timeout is set to the time. Uh, it is the time that consumer takes to process the message. So it is 30 seconds. Message retention period is of 4 days. It can go from 1 minute to 14 days. The delivery delay, if you want to delay the, if you know the message is coming to the SQS queue, but you want it to be added to the SQS queue after some delay, then you can put here anything between 0 seconds to 15 minutes. What would be the maximum message size? So it is 256 is the upper limit. You can go anywhere between 1 KB to 256 KB. Then there is receive message wait time. So this is nothing but this decides our long polling or short polling. If it is 0 seconds, then it means that we are doing the short polling. A consumer will again and again contact the queue and will ask whether the message is ready or not. So the number of API calls would be increasing over here, hence the cost will also increase. We can have it at 20 seconds or anything greater than zero will make it as long pooling. You can enable or disable the encryption and encryption here have two options, SSE SQS or SSE KMS. So encryption key is being managed by SQS and SSE SQS and the encryption key is managed by KMS when you use this. But right now I don't want the server side encryption so I'll disable it. Now who can be accessing the queue? Do you want only queue owner to access this or do you want to have specified AWS accounts, IAM rules and users? If you want that, you can select this and you can also use advanced for adding your own policy.
Next is retrieve retrieve policy. So it will identify that which source queue can be using this queue as dead letter queue. So if you want to make this queue as dead letter queue, then you have to basically uh, give it over here. Okay, whether this uh, queue can be used as dead letter or not. You can enable or disable this. Then dead letter queue. Do you want to set this queue to receive undeliverable messages? If yes, you have to enable this. But right now I don't want to do any of that. So what I'll do is I'll simply create a queue. So the queue is created. Now I have to make the subscription of this queue to the SNS topic. So this subscription can be created from either SQS or SNS. So here I can use subscribe to SNS and I'll go to the topics of SNS into which I'll go to this my standard topic and over here I will say publish messages. So I can add the subject over here. So let's say I'll put the subject as test and I will say the payload as uh, hello world. Okay, you can add your message attributes over here for adding the metadata items such as timestamp, signatures or identifiers. But I don't want to add any attributes. This will be helpful when you want to filter out the data. But right now I don't want to add any. I'll simply say publish message. And into the SQS, I'll go to my standard queue. And over here, I'll say send and receive messages. So if I say receive messages if i say poll for messages over here you can see one message is available right so this is the message if you see this message you will see the notification and the body of message as well so you can see the body the subject is test the message is hello world and the timestamp is also added here if there were any attributes then it would show here but we haven't given any attributes so this is how you can create your SNS and SQS to be sending and receiving the messages. Okay. I have this sample queue already created with me and I'm also subscribing the sample queue to my standard topic. I'll save it from here. And I am in to send and receive messages. You can see no messages available. It is because the subscription was not created when we sent the first message. If I send the message again, a sub we will be getting the message in both the queues. So let me just send one message again from SNS. To publishing the message over here, let's say the subject would be test one and the message body would be hello over here and we would be publishing the message send and receive message and if i try to pull four messages here i can see that one message is being available test one and hello message right so we will be receiving the message now to the sample as well as my standard queue both so this is it for the demonstration of sqs and sns So in this particular module, we understood about what are the messaging services available on AWS. So we talked about SQS and we talked about SNS. So SQS is a queuing service which allows us to decouple our mechanism. There are two types of SQS. There is standard queue and there is FIFO queue. Both of these queues are having their differences, right? Standard would be delivering the messages at least once and FIFO would be at most once. This will try to deliver all the messages in correct order, but sometimes duplication and out of messages may be there, but in FIFO duplication and out of messages will not be there. So that's why FIFO is having limited number of API calls, like API requests that it can handle this 3000. But for standard, you can have nearly unlimited API calls. Then we talked about visibility timeout, important concept and long polling and short polling. 
right apart from that we understood that we also have a sqs in the pull format like it pulls the messages out of the consumer needs to pull the messages out of the queue SNS is used for publish and subscriber model and it is uh, basically also having two types of topics standard and FIFO differences being the same and this is push mechanism so it would be pushing out the messages to the subscribers right so these are the things that we understood and lastly we also saw one demonstration on the portal where we subscribed to sns topic where we subscribed our queues to the sns topic right so this is all for this particular module it is important and one more important thing i would like to add over here is the maximum message size okay so we have 256 kb of maximum message size now you can reduce this size but you cannot increase this size apart from that message retention period is also important so message retention period we can have it between 1 minute to 14 days and the default retention time is of 4 days Okay, so this is applicable to SQS because SQS buffers our messages. But SNS never buffers our messages, so message retention will never be applied to SNS. If the messages are not being delivered, then what will happen? We will have the retry policy. But even after the retries, the messages are not being delivered, then we can put it into dead letter queue. So what is the concept of dead letter queue? It is the queue which handles the messages which are not processed correctly. Okay, or which are not being delivered successfully by SNS even after applying the retry policy. So dead letter queue is just like any other queue but we have to make the configurations while creating that particular queue. We have to say that okay I want to enable this queue to be used as dead letter queue. Okay. So this is all for this particular module and uh, that's it. Thank you everyone.